Behold, O God, our defender, and look upon the face of thine anointed, for one day in thy courts is better than a thousand. O oh, how amiable are thy dwellings, thou Lord of hosts! My soul hath a desire and longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Behold, O God, our defender, and look upon the face of thine anointed, for one day in thy courts is better than a thousand. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts and by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two commandments hang on the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give unto us the increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain that which thou dost promise. Make us to love that which thou dost command through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the epistle of the letter of Paul the Apostle to the Galatians, beginning in the 16th verse. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh, flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that he cannot do the things that he would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, barriers, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. 
and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Here it is. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> It is better to trust in the Lord than to put any confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. Alleluia, alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Alleluia. Father, bless and the Lord be on my heart, upon my lips, the Son of my heart, Lord, Lord, we proclaim the Holy Gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory, Glory be, be to, to thee, thee, O Lord. Lord. And it came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us man and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good, good morning to all of you. A few things to note. Uh, Sunday School for Kids and Adults is on. It's at 9.15 
Sunday mornings uh, for about a, uh, an hour. I, <laughs> I misspelled youth. Uh, that's worth looking at and laughing. Uh, youth are reading St. John's Gospel with DT, and Deacon Faith will lead the beginner's class. I'm going to be leading adults in, both in Scripture and in a book on Anglicanism. That though it's 100 years old, it's very readable, and it tells us everything, our history, what the beliefs of Anglicanism is, um, how you are to behave. It's a complete manual on the faith, and if you want to come and join us in that, all you got to do is walk downstairs. So after this service. Now, Richard Rose's memorial service is going to be on October the 1st. That's a Sunday at 2 p.m. at the One Mile Park. Um, I guess you'll find it by going to One Mile and looking around, seeing where there's something going on. Um, and after that, uh, people are invited to additionally come over to the Cozy Diner for a meal and a gathering. Flowers for our altar uh, need some signups for the wall outside there. You know where it is. Please choose that date that celebrates something in your life or something in a loved one. We need now about 6,000 bucks more to get our new carpets and flooring in the hallway and the sanctuary, the sacristy, and the front offices uh, where they're pretty wrecked. So if you would consider uh, a gift, it's, we have a $10,000 matching gift that will light up as soon as it hits that number. So we need about six grand to make that light up. Now, ACW announces its fall diaper drive now for the Women's Resource Clinic now or anytime in the next month or two, I think. Everything, everything baby will be received and given from the church. Ba diapers, receiver blankets, little baby outfits, things that you want to get. Uh, Bring them in. We'll we'll get them over there in the name of the church. And our vestry meets at 12.30 p.m. today. Finally, um, I had these set as on the side there. There is a, uh, a gathering of churches that has happened in the past for kind of many years, was doing it, that uh, looks like it was curtailed from the COVID years out till now. And it's back. It's called 10 Days. It was an idea that was to model Christian prayer on the 10 days of, of repentance in the Jewish religion that goes from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur in the fall. And so uh, matching those days, the churches pray with repentance, with a desire to seek God and get back to him. So 10 days at different 10 different sites is the objective. And during this 10 days of going from one church to another in the evening from seven to eight is all one hour commitment per night. Um, we are having the hosting of that event here on the 20th of this month. That's a Wednesday night between seven and eight o'clock. So if you want to come and see a whole lot of other Christians from other churches coming and worshiping in here and having deacon faith lead them through evening prayer, uh, that would be worth seeing all together. And some a little bit of music and prayer and time, and then that'll be it. So uh, you'll see the, uh, the objectives on one side and you'll see the churches that are there on the opposite side, culminating finally on Sunday night at the neighborhood church in the dome. So uh, come to one or more of these, but you're welcome to do so, all right. Now, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise. Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Every child that enters elementary education has come to terms with our numbering system in base 10. Base 10 means the digits zero through nine start an endless pattern that is repeated as you count upward. And there are no other integers. We base our entire mathematics on a system of tens. But why? 
Why 10 and not 12? Why not seven? How was it decided that 10 would be the turning point where we would place a one before a zero and start over? You might look down at your hands or take off your shoes and socks and discover the answer. There is something about 10 that is native to us. God can count in any numerical base, of course. And there are other systems than 10. The most important today is binomial system, the basis for our dig digital world. Base two means you simply turn it on or off, O one one O O one, and so forth. Add many of these binomials up in bits and bytes and you get a single letter or a color that you read or see or hear. Our world reflects with dualities we can easily recognize day and night, male and female, right and wrong, good and bad, up and down, in and out, etc. Our God exists in base three. Add one, two, and three, and four, and that's ten. One God, two natures of Christ, three persons of the Trinity, and four evangelists, or four points on the compass. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equal 10. Ten commandments, our Lord's prayers, ten phrases. The tithe comprised of a tenth of all gained. Jesus said of himself, I am, ten times in St. John's Gospel. Ten parables of the kingdom in St. Matthew. Ten virgins, ten generations from Adam to the flood. Ten fingers, ten toes and 10 lepers who came to Jesus one day seeking mercy and maybe a healing. Jesus traveled his country on foot, passing through every kind of neighborhood on his way. He didn't avoid people when he did, and often he came upon humble rejects who sat and begged for food, who longed for help, but who had given up doing for themselves. Jesus did Jesus ever give them money or even food? The pittance they asked for survival would leave them still a beggar. I can't remember his merely being charitable then. He always healed them. He might ask what they wanted, and because of his reputation, they asked the longing of their hearts, that I might receive my sight, that my son be delivered of a devil, that I might walk again. If they didn't ask, he asked them, do you want to walk? The, on this day, from Galilee toward Samaria, Jesus passed through a village where 10 lepers had their place to sit and to beg. Lepers were not to have physical contact with the healthy people for fear of transmitting their disease. From a distance, they called to Jesus, for mercy. It doesn't say they asked for healing. He granted them more than they bargained for, and he sent them to the priests. They were to be examined for leprosy. The priests in Israel held the authority to declare sickness or health in skin diseases. If the priest certified you clean, you were clean. Go show yourselves to the priests, said Jesus. And on their way, they found themselves healed. A leprosy is an infection that, if left untreated, can cause blindness and loss of appendages and ultimately death. The nerves stop sending pain signals to the brain, so injuries are not tended with more infection and loss. Today, it's entirely treatable and curable, but not in Christ's day. Their cure would have given these 10 sudden feeling in the parts of them that were restored to them. They stop, realize the change, and examine one another. But one of the 10 was perplexed. As a Samaritan, he couldn't ask a priest to certify him. He'd be rejected. He was an outcast without his ailment. What was he to do even now in his sickness that it was cured. There was only one thing, and he did it. 
he rushed back through town and found the man he knew was the cause of his joy. Calling out to Jesus, he fell at his feet to worship him. Thank you, my Lord. Praise you, my God. I bless you, Nazarene. You have made my life a blessing. God in heaven be praised. Jesus looked down upon the grateful man, recognizing in his clothing a Samaritan. Samaritans were mixed Jewish and Assyrian with a mixed up religion that was neither fish nor fowl. Jews had nothing to do with them. Jesus counted the only man with faith to return and give thanks. Were there not 10 cleansed, he asked, but where are the nine? Couldn't any of them return to give God his glory except this foreigner? Jesus did the math. One of 10, and this man, the only one who was not of the children of Israel. I sense disappointment in our Lord. The children of Israel <clears throat> had been given so much, perhaps too much from God. <clears throat> they grew complacent. They considered grace their due. The law was sufficient. The nine would go to the priest, be certified, live their normal lives again as good Jews. Ironically, from this day forward, although they had shared their is illness with him, these Jews would no longer share their lives with the Samaritan. Judged clean, they would be clean of him. His eyes, not blinded by conceit or entitlement, found a way back to the one. Jesus told him, Arise, my friend, and travel your path in peace. Your faith is what has made you whole again. The man's faith was in God and in Jesus. He had completed the path to salvation. Now Jesus comes to this world and becomes a man. He dies for the world's salvation, not just for you and me. His blood was human, shed on this earth to cleanse us all, and all are cleansed. The 10 lepers are the entire population of our world. One plus two plus three plus four. Every man, woman, and child who ever lived was cleansed on that day, the day of the cross, and then sent forth to see if the healing was true. We all live with the question, am I okay? Can I be what I am and still be accepted by God? What must I perform? Who can I see? Where do I go? How can I deserve salvation? We long for, yearn in our inner beings, and know that this world does not hold the answer in itself. There has to be more. Our eyes are met with the answers of this world, possessions, stronger muscles, leaner bodies, faster cars, chic clothes, pleasures and passions, and people skills, and money. Solomon tried all of that 3,000 years ago. He wrote it up. The wisest man of his era said, all is vanity, a mere chasing after wind. You will die, and a fool will inherit every bit of it. Am I okay? What can I do for God to accept me? That's the wrong question. Though we are bound to ask it, finding out who Jesus is and what he did, we should understand that he has answered this by being born among us. He does accept us. He comes to bring us a kind of peace we can't achieve by ourselves, peace on earth and peace with God. He died and rose to life so that sin and death is conquered. Sin is no longer our problem. The leprosy of our race is healed. We are no longer unclean. Does sin still exist then? Of course it does. Sin is anything that separates us from God. St. Paul figured it out. He said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, 
nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Paul's point is that we have been given God. We have been made whole. He did that to 10 lepers, so he has done it for you. Sin still separates us from God. It isn't his doing. The separation is what we do. He heals. We call ourselves unclean. He forgives. We condemn ourselves. He awakens us. We keep falling back to sleep. He gives us true spiritual feeling. We try to numb our spiritual nerves using any old method of pleasure for the moment. At any point, we can turn back to Jesus. It's not that we have it all figured out. It's not a belief system. It's not knowing the right people. It's not behaving in such and such a way. It's not religious language. Drop the pretense. You've been very sick, and now you've been made well. Just go back and thank the man who healed you. It's so simple. He never even thought of it. The world has been forgiven. Sin is no longer the question. Nine lepers didn't figure that out. Leprosy was no longer their problem. But they submitted to the whole program. See the priest, get the certificate, buy new clothes, go see the family. Their identity now was as former lepers, recovered lepers. It's like the alcoholic who must go 30 years to AA and say, hi, my name is Fred. I'm an alcoholic. That works to break the code of silence, to stop the lie. Someday, though, he'll just be happy old Fred. I'm Simon, and I'm a leper. I'm Peter, and I'm a sinner. I'm Frank, and I'm an adulterer. I'm Phyllis, and I'm a thief. I'm Sylvester, and I'm a drug dealer. Do we need these markers anymore to define ourselves? We may... We stay stuck to sins that no longer plague us. I'm Jacob, a Samaritan, and I only want to thank you, Jesus. I praise God. You declared his healing, and he has healed me. Thank God. Thank you. This is walking in the Spirit. You no longer define yourself by your sins, but by the grace of God given to you for your soul's health. Your testimony can count the failings of your former life, certainly. That gives God glory. But do not glory in the sins. Glory in the God who washed you clean from sin 2,000 years ago. Ten were healed, but only one gained faith. And in his faith, he was made truly whole. This man was not only healthy, he was saved. You are not only forgiven, you are kings and queens, priests of a new temple not made with hands, citizens of a better country, sons and daughters of God. Now give unending thanks to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how I said, is more blessed to give than to receive.
my Zoom audience out of the picture. Excuse me there, Deacon. I meant to do this. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy nothing shall be given to thee. Mm -hmm. Back in his office, was there in the name of God. Please remember your prayer of the sick. He gave you the suffering to our families and friends. Christians, we pray especially for Andy, Tracy, Donna, Joy, Frank, Sarah, Pat, Patty, Mark, Carol, Jim, Dennis, John, Eva, Lisa, Neil, David, Gary, and Judy. Pray for the dying and for the so the part of Christ, we pray for the lost, the prodigals, and atheists, especially Natalie, Joshua, Mark, Liz, Keith, Katie, Heidi, Bijan, Heather, Raj, Megan, Gary, Polly, or, or Scott, excuse me, James, Imran, and all terrorists turning back from their dark purpose to Christ. We pray for God's guidance for Donald, Ross, Isaac, Julie, Andrew, Angela, Dara, and James. With special Intentions, and then we uh, step out of uh, script here a second. This notice just came across from Iran Alive. You know, we're involved with that ministry in creating video content and sending it into that part of the world. Well, there's an interesting uh, sort of side benefit or change or something, an opportunity, call it what you will. He writes, we are witnessing a series of incredible events in Iran. Out of the 75,000 mosques in Iran, 50,000 of them have closed their doors, two thirds. This significant development sheds light on the evolving spiritual landscape in Iran and prompts us as Christ followers to consider how we can walk with the Iranians and lead them to Christ in these times of change. Now more than ever, it's crucial to dig deeper into the implications of these closures and what they signify for Christianity and the spreading of the gospel. What makes this situation particularly significant for Christians is the growing indication that Iranians are seeking truth outside of Islam. It's not just about a piece of cloth or a political unrest. It's about a profound thirst for the gospel. So praise God for that. That is remarkable to consider. Two thirds of the mosques are closed. For business. That's a change. Well, we stop, we pray with special intentions for Jamal and his family, Randy and his family, for Eric and his family, for Mooney, Dolores, Eric, and Andy, the Gogi's Cafe, and friends, and they and Gogi, and their wonderful restaurant, and we them, and uh, we bless them all the way in our And for fire, police, EMS, and dispatch. First responders have protection and blessing. We pray. For America's return to Christ, for our Iran mission, which we just prayed for in the amazing news, Women's Resource Clinic and the babies born and unborn and our die for Jordan, and to know and to do God's will. We pray for those in armed service, especially for Gavin Douglas and Sebastian, for all travelers, for our children and our youth, and are there birthdays? Did you get blessed last night? Dude? No, it's your turn. I think you weren't here. Adam is going to sort of help in the days. Happy birthday. Six days later. Watch over thy child, and the Lord as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be, keeping her unspotted from the world. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrow. Raise her up as she falls, and in her heart, that peace, 
which passeth all understanding, abide all the days of her life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. I don't know if you Pray for all those in Christian marriage and other anniversaries. We give thanksgiving to God for this, this news. This is interesting. Things will change in Iran in our life. Uh, to what degree and in what direction, that's not sure. So pray for a good outcome and that the many of them will be open to the gospel and to Jesus and to new churches forming. And that the regime there will stop making Christianity illegal. It's a very bad thing. We give thanks even to God for uh, the sacrament and for the fact that Christ died to save us and forgive us all. And we are forgiven. We need only grasp it, take it by faith, and love him for it. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ church. Almighty and heavenly living God, who by the heavenly Father, has caused to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks to all men, we humbly beseech thee, most merciful, to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually. The universal church is the spirit of true unity and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness, vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially Blair, our Archbishop, Donald, our Bishop, and Scott, our, our suffering Bishop, and other ministers, especially Brian and David and Deacons, that they may know by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation in their presence. That we meet our and do reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, and comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life were in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, part of this life and thy faith and fear. Be seeking me to grant them continual growth and our love and service, and to give us grace, so to follow their good example, that with them we may be partakers of that heavenly kingdom. Grant us, O Father, for Jesus Christ, save our only mediator and advocate. Amen. He who truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and attempt to lead a new life, following the commandments of God. And walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. And make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly believe. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge the derail upon the heaven of the sin and wickedness. Which we are not time to time or experience to have in them. My God, the word of the deed, the same side of my Jesus, the key to provoking the most stress we have to have, the key to the best of the new friends we have, and our heart of the self, the deed of God's good, the remembrance of them, the freedom of God, the burden of them, the Father, and the mercy of the Father. Mighty God, Heavenly Father, who is great just, promise forgiveness of sins to all those who with heart and repentance and true faith and love 
have mercy upon me, pardon the Lord Jesus, all your sin, firm and strict to me in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here we come to the words of our Savior Christ, said unto all who truly return to him, I want to be all need is to pay up and back in the I will be right. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son and all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul says. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received. Christ Jesus came into the world to save the sinner. Here also what St. John says. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. It is Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation of our sins. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto you. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right to say to you. It is very meet and right in our bound duty to teach us at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, holy Father, Almighty everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we Lord and magnify thy glorious name, heaven more praise thee, and say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most blessed is he to come in the name of the Lord. What's that happen? All glory be to thee, Almighty God of heaven, Father. For the thou of it in us, didst give thine only son to Jesus Christ, suffered death upon the cross of our faith, who may bear by his one oblation of himself one offering, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and the and the holy gospel of man is within you. A perpetual memory of that whose precious death is sent until his coming again. During the night, when he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he gave him thanks, he prayed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Life of the suffering he did the times. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants who celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty. These thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. The memorial of thy Son hath commanded us to thee, having remembrance of his blessed past and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks. For the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the Son. We most humbly beseech thee, merciful Father, for this, that thou almighty goodness not safe to bless <clears throat> and sanctify thy word and Holy Spirit. These thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, the holy institution, in remembrance of the death and death, may be partakers of the most blessed body. And, and we are to desire that Father of goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech thee to grant it, that by the merit and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain the vision of our sin and all other benefits of his passion. 
Here we are from the sin of thee, O Lord, ourselves, our soul and body. Be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice to the Lord. How we seek you? That we and all of us would come and partake of this holy communion. The word we receive the most precious body and the blood of thy son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. May my body with him that he may dwell in us and be. So we are unworthy to come to the sin, and to the innocent. Yet we beseech thee to accept this our town of duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardon our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, O Son of the Lord, through the name of the Holy Ghost, we all honor and glory in this world and to the time. Amen. Now the Savior Christ has called us here bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven. Peace of the Lord be always with you and with Christ's spirit. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy forgiveness. We do not presume to come to this side of table, O merciful Lord. Our sin and our own righteousness. But in the hand of all the great mercies, we are not worthy so much as we gather out of the of the earth. Thou art the same one whose property is always the heavens. Grant us, therefore, great Lord, so that we the flesh of thy dear Son Jesus Christ and the drink of his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may ever more dwell in him. Yes. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am my Lord, who is thou, goodest him under my roof. For his sweet and word of my name, my son, shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy of his thou, goodest him under my roof. For his sweet and word of my name, my son, shall be Lord, I am not worthy of his thou, goodest him under my roof. For his sweet and word of my name, my son, shall be
Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you, except the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and the living God, we most heartily thank you. For that thou hast found safe to feed us, to give thee we receive these holy mysteries. With the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, that to show us thereby thy favor to be supported. And that we are bringing in this important mystical body of us, which gives the blessed company of all faithful people, and or else heirs, true hope of everlasting kingdom, by the merit of his most precious death and death. We humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom we be in the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world with this Amen. Friends, we beseech thee, O Lord, that we who have received the heavenly sacrament may thereby grow in grace to the attainment of our eternal redemption through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with the right spirit, depart from peace. Thanks be to God. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of Mother God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of our Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain with you always. God, who are the author of peace and love of comfort, in all that you can stand with our eternal life, to serve us, to put us in faith, defend us by all sins and all assault of our enemies, that we surely do not come by the hands, may not fear the power of any adversary, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yeah, I'm going to do it. 